Windows 11 on ARM is now officially supported on Apple Silicon, but it's not all good news if you want to run Windows 11 on Apple's M1 or M2 Max. So in a blog post this week, Microsoft announced that it was going to start officially supporting Windows 11 on Apple Silicon with the release of Parallels version 18. Now, you could install Windows 11 on ARM in Parallels before, but you needed to use an insider preview build in order to get updates, and that is going to change going forwards. Now, the biggest limitation is that nested virtualization isn't supported. So what does that mean exactly? Well, there are a lot of features in Windows 11 that depend on nested virtualization. So all of the features that are based on virtualization-based security, like credential guard and memory isolation, they all rely on nested virtualization, so they won't be available. Other things like the Windows subsystem for Linux, for instance, and the subsystem for Android, and the Windows Sandbox feature are all unavailable in Windows 11 on ARM if you decide to run it inside Parallels on a Mac. There are some other limitations as well. So 32-bit ARM applications, surprisingly, are not being supported. Although maybe it shouldn't be too surprising because Microsoft is actually deprecating support for 32-bit ARM applications in Windows on ARM. But you can still run 64-bit ARM applications and emulated x86 and 64 apps. So when I first heard about it this week, I thought, well, this is going to be, you know, really interesting news, but it's probably not what most people really want to hear. Now, the thing is with the new Apple Silicon, so if it's got an M1 or M2 chip, Apple doesn't support Boot Camp. Now, with the old Intel Max, Boot Camp was basically a system that allowed you to at boot up choose between running Mac OS or Windows 10. So you could run Windows directly on the hardware itself. Now you can't do that with the new ARM-based Macs. So this is probably as good as it's going to get until Apple, you know, they may never decide to add back bootcamp support. We'll have to wait and see. So this is running Windows 11 on top of Mac OS in a virtualized environment. Now from what I've heard it runs pretty well, but of course there is going to be a slight performance hit from the fact that you're running Windows 11 on top of another operating system. So the first thing that came to my mind is, well, this is probably actually not really that interesting, but it could actually be a really interesting stopgap for people who want an ARM-based notebook, but aren't prepared to buy into you know, an ARM-based PC today. So there are various reasons why you probably wouldn't want to buy an ARM-based PC today. One of them is, of course, well, Windows 11 on ARM itself has some limitations and there are not that many native apps for the platform. Form. The second is there's not really, as far as I understand, with most of the devices that are available right now, a huge benefit to running Windows on ARM in terms of efficiency and, well, most importantly, of course, battery power. For whatever reason, they don't quite live up to expectations. So that is an option, a potential stopgap until you know, Windows-based ARM devices start to you know, challenge Apple. But that's you know, at least two or three years away, in my opinion. So there are some other disadvantages, of course. You know, not only are you going to get a slight performance hit, you also need to buy Parallels. So that's probably going to set you back another $100. And you also need to buy a license for Windows. So that's probably also going to set you back. I don't know how much licenses for Windows cost off the shelf these days, but let's say $100, $150. So that's considerably adding to the cost of you know, buying a new notebook. So if you've got any experience of running Windows 11 on ARM inside parallels on a Mac, I'd really love to know what your experience has been with that. So in other news this week, Microsoft is finally bringing its unified update platform or UUP to on-premises updates. So that means Microsoft Endpoint Configuration Manager and Windows Server Update Services. Now, the unified update platform has been available as part of Microsoft Update already for several years. So think, you know, if you're updating just through Windows Update inside Windows or using Windows Update for Business, for instance. Now, the main benefits of the unified update platform are smaller updates. So the actual update files that you download are about 30% smaller, I think, and less reboots. You can install, you know, a lot of updates at the same time and 
potentially only need to reboot the device once. Now, at the end of March, Microsoft is going to enable the unified update platform for on-premises updates. And it's only going to be available for Windows 11 22H2 devices and later. With one exception, if you're upgrading uh, you know, a feature update from Windows 10 20H1 to Windows 11 22H2. That's the only exception. And the new uh, unified update platform will apply to quality and feature updates. So any supported version of Windows Server update services is supported with this new platform. But if you're using Configuration Manager, you will need to be using version 2203 or later. So if you're managing a fleet of Windows devices using on-premises update technology, then this is a fairly significant change. And I'm going to list the full list of benefits now. So up to 30% smaller client downloads for quality updates. You get cumulative update integration with feature updates. So you can do all of that you know, in just one reboot. Uh, seamless retention of installed language packs and optional features during feature updates. Reduced client downloads for feature updates, so i.e. the inbox app downloads are conditional. Automatic OS healing during the update process and end user acquisition of language packs and features on demand is going to be retained. So that's the full list of benefits according to Microsoft's blog post. So when this goes live on March 28th, this will require a one-time download of 10 gigabytes to your Windows Server Update Services distribution points, but only to the distribution point. And then after that, the clients will immediately start benefiting from smaller update downloads. So in other news this week, Microsoft announced that it's going to be giving File Explorer in Windows Insider Preview Builds a complete backend overhaul. So what they said is that they're moving File Explorer to the WinApp SDK. So that was kind of the replacement for uh, universal Windows platform apps and the WinUI free uh, design language, if you like, which is uh, the default design language for Windows 11. So, of course, File Explorer has been around in Windows since the year dot. And the current version that we have in Windows 11 is uh, essentially a, a legacy client app that uses WinUI 2 with the help of a technology called XAML Islands. Now, of course, it makes sense that Microsoft would want to move File Explorer over to WinUI 3 to bring it in line with the other uh, OS components in Windows 11. But, of course, working with you know that legacy app and WinUI 2 and XAML Islands kind of facilitator and that is quite complex. So they probably just want to get rid of that layer of complexity as well. Now, there are some concerns that, you know, upgrading to this new uh, backend will break some of the extensibility features of File Explorer. So for instance, there are lots of applications that plug into File Explorer right now, like Dropbox and Google Drive and other applications that, you know, integrate with the context menu when you right click on a file or folder. So potentially this could, I don't know, break some of those things. So we'll have to see what Microsoft plans to do with that as they begin to develop this. Now, of course, we don't really know whether this is going to be part of a future update in Windows 11 or whether this new version of File Explorer will ultimately only see the light of day maybe in Windows 12. I have a suspicion we might not see this in Windows 11, uh, but, you know, if, especially if they're going to be some compatibility issues issues and all that kind of stuff. But we'll see how this develops. In principle, it sounds like a good thing. But unfortunately, I don't know enough about WinUI 3 and the WinApp SDK to really say, is it going to be a great change or not? You know, obviously, some more visual consistency within the operating system is good, providing that it doesn't negatively affect performance. It seems to me at the moment, File Explorer in Windows 11 finally seems to perform reasonably well compared to the initial release of Windows 11 where it seemed to be a bit clunky and certain things really didn't perform quite as well as they should do. So I hope this is not going to be a step backwards in that department but we'll have to wait and see.
If you found this video useful, then I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like. Let me know what you think about these changes to File Explorer in the comments below. Are you going to consider running Windows 11 on ARM on Apple Silicon? I'd really love to know if you've already done it, what your experience is, or if it's something that you would consider doing. I'm going to leave a video on the screen that you might find interesting, so do check that out. That's it from me for this week, and I'll see you next time.